Hi everyone, we're going to talk about the counting principle and start a probability. Uh, this is the basis for probability. You will use the counting principle for um, everything in probability. So basically, there's two kind of events that can happen. There's uh, independent events and uh, what's called dependent events. And we'll talk about that more. But independent events is when one the first event occurs and the second event that follows it is not dependent on the first event. Uh, event. Whereas dependent, the second event does depend on what happens in the first event. But uh, the fundamental principle of counting is uh, actually where if an event, some event M, can occur in M ways and is followed by an event N that can occur in N ways, then you can um, multiply it M times N ways. So uh, we'll talk about that. We have about 11 word problems that I'm going to go over to help you with that and um, explain it more. And I think it's important to know before we get started what we mean by digits. So we're talking about digits. And you probably already know this, but if you're new to the probability, when um, they're talking about digits, they're talking about these numbers here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and nine. So when you're talking about digits, we have ten digits. They're singular numbers here from zero to nine. And that's what it means by digits. So let's uh, just start with the word problems. And the first one we have is uh, the letters A, B, C, and D are used to form four-letter passwords for ending a computer file. So um, some of these word problems are taken from um, older counting principle type um, uh, word problems, but um, they give you the general idea. So how many passwords uh, are possible if letters can be repeated any number of times? So when I'm, when I do this, what I do is I make um, my four digits here and I can repeat. So when I'm repeating I have four four letters here I can use. And how many ways, and a lot of times when you're doing the counting principle, you're talking about how many ways. So we're talking about how many ways, how many outcomes are possible. So I can choose A, B, C, or D. So I have four choices, so that's four different ways. Now I can repeat, so I still have four different ways. I can repeat again, I have four different ways. I repeat again, I have four. So when you multiply this out, you get 4 to the 4th, or you can just uh, multiply this out, and you get uh, 256. So there's two fifty two 256 ways that you can form four-letter passwords with those four letters. Now, if we say it can't be repeated, so not repeated, um, what I'm going to do is take these four letters, and I'm going to... Go one, two, three, four. So you can have four ways to choose the first one. But once I choose one of these letters, it doesn't matter which one. Once I choose one, I only have three left. Once I choose a second one, I only have two left. And then I have my last one left. So when you multiply that out, you get 12 times 2, which is 24 ways. Whoops, sorry. So that's 24 ways. So um, this non-repeated, this is called dependent. Whereas the first one was independent. It didn't matter what we picked uh, for the first one, and we could just repeat um, the same letters. But when we can't repeat, our second choice depends on what we ch chose for the first. All right? So that's what it means by independent and dependent. Now, um, the next question, you probably saw something like this in eighth grade. And what we're going to do is use the counting principle. If a restaurant serves five main dishes and three salads and four desserts, how many different 
um, meals can be ordered if you have the you can choose one from each. So the ba basically what you have you have M ways here, N ways here, and we can call this O ways and just multiply it. It's five times three times four, which is twenty times three, which is what um, uh, sixty ways. That would be 60 ways. Now, what you probably did in middle school is you probably did a, a tree. Uh, and I don't know if you went up or down. I'm going to go sideways here. So, basically, what you'd have done, I'm going to try to squeeze it in here. You have five different meals. One, two, three, four, five. And then with those meals, you have three different salads. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. It's going to get messy here. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then after you choose your dessert, you can go and do your, um, I mean, your salad, you can do your four desserts. And you have one, two, three, four, and so forth. You put four on here. And then you add all this up, like one, two, three, four. You can do it on each one. And that would be 60 ways. Of course, that's the very long way to do it. Whereas now that we know the counting principle, all you have to do is multiply it. It's 5 times 3 times 4. So that's 60 different ways. Okay. How many five-digit numbers can be formed using these digits, 4, 6, 7, 2, and 8, if digits can be repeated any number of times? So, um, there's a total of five digits, and um, it's just going to be five to the fifth, because that's, uh, I'm going to write one, two, three, four, five, and that's just going to be five times five times five times five times five, and it's very helpful if you have a calculator with you. So, um when you do that, um, basically, I think I typed this wrong, yeah. So, basically, you do that, but this question should have been uh, how many five-digit even numbers. So, let me change this and erase it. If we talk about five-digit even numbers, um, let me write that in here. Five-digit even numbers. That should be even. And if it can repeat it, so I'm one, two, three, four, five. So I have five ways to choose the first one, five ways to choose the second, five the third, uh, five the fourth. But the last digit, I only have four ways because we can include seven. Because if you put seven, for example, if I had four... Uh, four, six, two, but if I put seven here at the end, that means that would be an odd number. So there's only four different ways to choose the even because the rest of the um, four digits are even. So when you do that, excuse me, you get two, 2,500 ways. Okay. Now the next problem, how many uh, ways can four different... How many ways can four different books um, be arranged on a shelf? So basically, we have four different books, and it's just the same type, say, called book A, B, C, and D. Now, I have four different books, and um, so if I pick book A out of the four, I have four ways to choose that. Then once I put that book on the shelf, I only have three different ways. Then I have two different ways. Then I have one different ways. So the total is 24 ways. All right, how many different four-digit positive even integers are there? So remember, again, our integers are here. I'll write them out. Yet there's 10 different integers. All right, so one, two, three, four. Um, I have, first of all, if I'm talking about integers, 
my first integer can't be a zero. Because if it's zero, then that would only leave three integers. For example, if I had zero, one, two, three, that zero really doesn't count, so that would be 123. So we only have nine ways to pick the first letter. Now we can repeat, so the next way I can have 10. Um, the third uh, digit, there's 10 ways to choose from. However, on the last digit, I only have five ways because there's only five even integers here. So one, two, three, four, five. And when you multiply that out, um, that would be um, 4,500 ways. All right? The next one, how many license plates consisting of three letters? So I'm going to put my three letters and then followed by three numbers. So that's like three digits. Are possible when repetition is allowed. So basically, there we're, we're counting 26 letters of the alphabet. So when we, re, can, when we repeat, we're going to have 26 times 26 times 26. And there's 10 digits, so that would be 10 times 10 times 10. So the total there would be um, seventeen million five hundred and seventy six thousand. Now, if we do this again with no repetition allowed, I have one, two, three, and then we have one, two, three for the digits. If we can't repeat, we're going to get twenty six times twenty five times twenty four. And for digits, we're going to have 10 times 9 times 8. This one is where no repetition is allowed as dependent. The first one was independent. And the total would be 11,232,000. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Now, the next um, few problems are pretty easy. A briefcase has three rotating cylinders containing... 10 digits, so 1, 2, 3. How many um, numerical codes are possible? So that would be 10 times 10 times 10. That equals 10,000. Uh, Three zeros there. All right, and this one, for some reason, my students have a hard time with. There are five different uh, difficult. This is supposed to be different. So different uh, routes. A student can take from her home to school. In how many ways can she make a round trip if she uses a different route coming than going? So what I do is I'm here's her home right here and here is school here. So I can go one route here one two three four five so there's five ways to go, but coming home, she has to use a different route. So coming home, uh, if she went um, this route, coming to school, that's one out of the five ways, she would only have four ways to come back. So it's basically, if she has five ways to get there, but only four ways to get back. So that would be 20 ways. And the next problem. <coughs> now, here's a word problem that I have, not, I have no idea what a golf club is. But they say they make s seven different shaft links. So that's seven. Three different grips. Five different lies. And I don't know what that is. And two different club head materials. And I have no idea what all this is. But I'm just going to use my counting principle. It's going to be 7 times 3 times 5 times 2. And um, that would be 210 ways. All right. Now, the last two problems. 
In how many different ways can the four call letters of a radio station be arranged if the first letter must be W or K? So we have four letters. Um, the first way uh, we can use W, but since we only have W, that means there's only 25 left, and we can't repeat, so this is dependent, times 24 times 23. Or we could use K first, and then that would be 25 times 24 times 23. And then um, we have two of those. When I said or, so it's either W or K. When you say or in probability, it means add them. Now what you could have done is just said, well, one, two, three, four. There's two ways to choose the first. Then you'd have 25 times 24 times 23. So either way you do it, you could have done it this way or this way and um, use a calculator and you'll get 27,600 um, ways. Now, how many different uh, seven digit phone numbers can be formed if the first digit cannot be zero or one? So I have seven digits. Again, we really should have what? 10 digits nowadays, but let's just go with seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the first two, the first digit can't be zero or one, so that would just be eight. All right? And then um, the rest of them you can choose, we can repeat, so this is independent, and it's just going to be 10 different ways to choose each digit. So that's going to be eight million which is a lot. Now this would be independent, so it means repeated. And the next one's going to be dependent. That means it can't be repeated. And if it can't be repeated, uh, what we're going to get is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now I, c I can have eight ways to choose the first. But then, if once I choose one digit, I only have nine left. And then, then you only have eight, then seven, then six, then five, then four to choose the last. And when you multiply that out, you get 483,840 ways. Okay? So that's basically some word problems on the counting principle. Um, the next video I'm going to make is on the difference between linear and circular permutations. And um, we're gonna, uh, we've actually done permutations in this video, but we didn't, we didn't um, talk about why they were permutations. We will do that in the next video. Have a nice day. Thank you.